Hi friends and welcome to the Rolla Public Library's Virtual Storytime. My name is Mr. Derek and we have our friend Beatrix Bunny here today to help us read this story. Hey Beatrix, how's it going? Hi Mr. Derek! Hi kids! So our, I believe if we talked, we talked last time about a story you wanted, right? Yeah, last time the tortoise picked one out, but I never get to pick one out and that's right. Uh, Beatrix, Beatrix. Do you remember what story you wanted to read? Um, hmm, it had something to do with Brothers Grimm. That's right. You, I believe you wanted to read Rumpelstiltskin, right? Yeah. Very good. Well, we're going to go ahead and read Rumpelstiltskin if you're ready. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Is all the kids ready? Uh, I believe so. Is everybody ready to read Rumpelstiltskin? I think they're all ready, Beatrix. Very good. Well, Beatrice is going to go take a seat, and we are going to go ahead and do story time. So buckle up and get ready. Rumpelstiltskin by the Brothers Grimm. Once there was a miller who was poor, but who had a beautiful daughter. Now it happened that he had to go and speak to the king, and in order to make himself appear important, he said to him, I have a daughter who can spin straw into gold. The king said to the miller, That is an art which pleases me well. If your daughter is as clever as you say, bring her tomorrow, and I will see what she can actually do. And when the girl was brought to him, he took her into a room, which was quite full of straw, gave her a spinning wheel and a reel, and said, Now set to work, and if by tomorrow morning, early, you have not spun this straw into gold during the night, you must die. Thereupon he himself locked up the room and left her in it alone. So there sat the poor miller's daughter, and for the life of her, she could not tell what to do. She had no idea how straw could be spun into gold, and she grew more and more miserable until at last she began to cry. But all at once the door opened and in came a little man. Good evening, Mistress Miller. Why are you crying so? I think this little man might be a little bit bad. What do you think? I think, I think there's something not good about to happen here. Alas, answered the girl, I have to spin straw into gold, and I do not know how. What will you give me, said the little man, if I do it for you? My necklace, said the girl. She was really desperate. The little man took the necklace, seated himself in front of the wheel, and whir, 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 three turns, and the reel was full. Then he put another on, and whir, 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 three times again, and the second was full too. And so it went on until the morning, when all the straw was spun, and all the reels were full of gold. By daybreak, the king was already there, and when he saw the gold, he was astonished and delighted. But his heart became only more greedy. He had the miller's daughter taken into another room, full of straw, which was much larger, and commanded her to spin that also in one night, if she valued her life. The girl knew not how to help herself, and she was crying again. When the door opened, and the little man appeared and said, what will you give me this time if I spin that straw into gold for you? I will give you the ring on my finger, answered the girl. The little man took the ring and again began to turn the wheel and by morning had spun all the straw into glittering gold. The king rejoiced beyond measure at the sight, but still he had not enough gold. And he had the miller's daughter taken into a still larger room full of straw and said, you must spend this too in the course of this night, but if you succeed, you shall be my wife. And he thought, even if she is a miller's daughter, I could not find a richer wife in the whole world. Kings didn't like to marry poor people. When the girl was alone, the little man came again for the third time and said, What will you give me if I spin the straw for you this time? I have nothing left to give, she answered. Then promise me, if you should become queen, that I will have your first child. Who knows if that will even happen, the, um, the girl thought. And not knowing how else to help herself in this dire situation, she promised the little man what he wanted. And for that, he once more spanned all the straw into gold. And when the king came in the morning and found all he had wished for, he took her in marriage, and the pretty miller's daughter became a queen. 
A year after, she had a beautiful child, and she never gave a thought to the little man. But suddenly, he came into her room and said, Now give me what you promised. The queen was horror-struck. She offered the little man all the riches of the kingdom if he would just leave the child alone. But the little man said, Nope. Something that is living is dearer to me than all the treasures in this kingdom. Then the queen began to weep and cry again. The little man started to pity her. I'll tell you what, he said. I'll give you mm, three days time. If by that time you find out my name, you will get to keep your child. So the queen thought the whole night of all the names that she had ever heard and she sent a messenger over the country to inquire far and wide for any other names that there might be. When the little man came the next day, she began with some of the simple names. Is it Casper? She said. No. John? Is it Jim? And all these names she said, one after the other, but to every single one of these names, the little man said, That is not my name. On the second day, she had inquiries made in the neighborhood as to the names of the people there, and she repeated to the little man the most common or the most uncommon and curious names that she had not heard before herself. She said, perhaps your name is Short Ribs? Maybe it's Sheep Shanks. Is it Lace Lake? But he always answered, that is not my name. On the third day, the messenger came back again and said, I have not been able to find a single new name, but... I do have good news. As I came to a high mountain at the end of the forest where the fox and the hare bid each other good night, there I saw a little house, and before the house a fire was burning, and round about the fire quite a ridiculous little man was jumping. He hopped up upon one leg, and he was shouting, Today I bake, tomorrow I brew. The next I'll have the young queen's child. Ha! Glad am I that no one knew that Rumpelstiltskin is my name. You may think how glad the queen was when she heard the name. And when soon afterwards, the little man came in for, on the third day and asked, Now, Mistress Queen, what is my name? At first, she said, Hmm, is your name Conrad? No. Then she paused for a moment and thought, Is your name Harry? No, he said. She thought for a minute. Hmm. Perhaps your name is Rumpelstiltskin. That made the little man really angry. The devil has told you that. The devil has told you that, cried the little man, and in his anger he plunged his foot so deep into the earth that his whole leg went in. And then in a rage he pulled up on his leg so hard with both hands that he tore himself into two. The end. So that was the story of Rumpelstiltskin. We have many stories from the Brothers Grimm, from Hans Christian Andersen, Aesop, and many authors, both old and new, here at the Rolla Public Library. And I encourage you to request a book bundle so that you can have story time with your own grown-ups in your own home. Give us a call at 573-364-2604, and we can bring out not only your craft bags, but also a book bundle of different books that you would like to read, and then you guys can do story time in your own house. Have fun, and I'm glad you are liking the stories, and we will see you next time.